I remember thinking when I was a little bit smaller That all my days would be filled with happiness and fun But then I discovered it's not that easy Some days can get you down but the rest is up to us I won't hesitate to see something great Cause I choose, I choose joy, joy. And a little bit of laughter To spin some bad luck into a real good time It doesn't matter what life brings You gotta focus on the bright side We can be thankful, we can be grateful The choice is yours and mine I won't hesitate to see something great Cause I choose, I choose joy, joy. Some Christmas lights Oh, there ain't nothing like the Christmas joy Let's go, sing it out I want some Christmas cookies I wanna see some Christmas lights Oh, there ain't nothing like the Christmas joy Merry Christmas, everybody All the lights are bright, snow on the ground I hear the jingle bells jingling all around There ain't nothing like the Christmas joy My name is Haley, and we are getting so close to the big day. Of course, I'm talking about Christmas. Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Christmas is a time of great celebration year after year, but it can also be a time of great conflict. People argue over how many presents are under the tree, what Christmas movie they want to watch, who gets the last candy cane, and decorations. Multicolored lights or solid color lights? Big bulbs or little bulbs? Twinkle or no twinkle? It can be exhausting for some people, but not me, because I've got a plan. This year, my plan is to put up all the lights. Big, small, solid, twinkling. I even got some that play music. They're all going up. <laughs> that way, everyone's happy, right? <sighs> Let's get to work. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Haley's perfect Christmas plan! Oh, 
what did I, uh, well, here we go, one more try, <laughs> one more try, one more try. Haley's birth, Haley's Christmas plan. Haley's perfect Christmas plan. It's perfect. <laughs> Just want to say, God. Oh no, Ugh, the lights aren't working. You know what that means. If one light is out, then they all go out. So somewhere in this extravaganza of light, there is a single light bulb that is not working. Ugh, I should have planned this out better. Wait a second. Good thing I have one of these. A light bulb tester. I just have to test each bulb. All of 2,875 of them. Woo! All right. In today's story, a young lady named Mary is put to the test. Will she try to make it on her own, or will she trust that there's a greater plan? Hmm. Now, where to begin? <sighs> The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, Chapter 1, verses 26 through 56. Mary of Nazareth was ordinary. True story. An ordinary young woman with an ordinary name, engaged to an ordinary carpenter named Joseph. She lived in an ordinary small town, far from any city that really mattered. In fact, years later, someone would ask, can anything good come from Nazareth? But even though Mary seemed so very ordinary, her heart was not. She loved and trusted God. Even though her people had been ruled over by the Romans for centuries, Mary believed God's promise that someday he would send a rescuer. Blessed are you, O God, our Lord, King of the universe. But no matter how much Mary loved God, she could never have predicted what would happen one ordinary morning. Dishes cleaned, floor swept, need to fetch water from the well. Mary's morning chores were interrupted by a shimmering flash of light. Oh! A blazing angel stood before her. Its presence seemed to fill the entire room. Mary. The Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. I... I don't understand. Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. God... is pleased... with me? You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great, the son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king like his father David of long ago. His kingdom will never end. Dozens of questions raced through Mary's mind. How can this happen? I'm not even married yet. The Holy Spirit will make it happen. In fact, your relative Elizabeth is going to have a baby, even though she is old and people thought she could not have children. That's because what God says will always come true. Mary's mind was still reeling, but she knew she could trust God through all of it. I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. The angel left. The room dimmed. Mary sat down to gather her thoughts. A baby? God's son? I've got to see Elizabeth. As quickly as she could, Mary found a group traveling to the hill country of Judea where Elizabeth lived. After long days on the road, Mary reached the home of Elizabeth and Zechariah. Why, it's Mary. Mary hugged her much older relative. Elizabeth, you really are going to have a baby. As Mary spoke, Elizabeth's baby kicked and rolled inside her. Oh, God has blessed you more than other women, and blessed is the child you will have. Why is God so kind to me? 
Why has the mother of my Lord come to me? How, how did you know? As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the baby inside me jumped for joy. You are a woman God has blessed. You have believed the Lord would keep his promises to you. Could I stay with you for a while? Of course. It's too quiet around here anyway. Why is that? Zachariah hasn't said a word in more than six months. My goodness. Long story. He met an angel. Gabriel? That's the one. Come in, sit down, have some tea. During the time Mary stayed with Elizabeth, the joy in her heart overflowed. My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God, my Savior. He has taken note of me even though I am not considered important. He has always remembered to be kind, just as he promised to our people long ago. Mary was just beginning to see how God's amazing plan would unfold. She stayed with Elizabeth for three months, and then she returned home. Okay, this is it. The last bulb I have to check. But before I do, can you imagine what it must have been like to be Mary? She probably had all kinds of dreams and plans for her life, and then BOOM! She's visited by an angel of the Lord and everything changes. But get this, God's plan for Mary was bigger and better than any plans she may have had for herself. She went from being Mary, an ordinary girl from the city of Nazareth, to Mary, the girl we read about every year who carried God's son into the world. That's some plan. This may surprise you. God still has a plan, and his plan is bigger and better than any plans we may make for ourselves. Because, you see, sometimes our plans fail. Sometimes our plans and someone else's plans are in conflict. Grrr! But we can celebrate knowing that when God has a plan, it never fails. His plan is the perfect plan, and you can trust Him no matter what. The best time to remember that is when things aren't going the way you want or expect. Could be that God sees something in your circumstance that you don't see. So here's the one thing to remember today. Celebrate because God has a plan. All right, let's check this last light bulb. Maybe God has a plan for the big finish. <laughs> too. Well, all the light bulbs are working. I guess it's important to point out now that we won't always understand God's plan. And that's okay. I'll see you next time. Bye! <gasps> ah! Wait, they're working! <laughs> Big finish! Yay!